these are the points that you need to know about life insurance business. Point note. That unlike the general insurance which involve the insurance of property, this is the insurance of people's lives. Point number two that you need to know about the life insurance is the, the taxable income is determined separately from general insurance business. Insurance business. That when you are getting the taxable income of life, don't mix it together with general, even if they are being done by the same insurance company. Actually, life insurance business appear as an investment income, like other sources of income. We have general and others where life now comes in. A point number three to note is that the taxable income, so the key thing here was that you determine separately. Another one is that the taxable income of life business consists of the total of three items if available. That the taxable income of life business consists of only three items if they are available. If they are not available, don't post them. So these are, uh -huh. so these are, one, we have actuarial surplus, recommended by an actuary, Uh, this is an actually to be transferred to be transferred from life fund for benefit of shareholders. So let me write them down and then we'll discuss them. Uh, number two, another taxable income for life business is any other amount. take 15 percent so this is what we are saying unlike the general business or other businesses where we have been saying that we use the net profit or the gross profit method when it comes to the life insurance business we don't have incomes or expenses it's all about adding the three items that we have said here if they are there and then we tax them period nothing more no income no expense no net profit no gross profit so we are saying one of the taxable items is actuarial surplus recommended by an actuary to be transferred from the life fund for the benefit of shareholders. So in this case, actuary is an uh, expert in life insurance business and he normally value, he normally value the asset of life insurance business. He may value the assets of an insurance business, for example, life to be 20 million. And then he also value the reliability of life business. It may be 12 million. So the excess which is 8 million, he may or she may recommend this excess, 5 million be transferred for the benefit of shareholder. So this excess is the one that you're saying actuarial surplus. So he may say this one, let it be transferred for the benefit of shareholder out of the 8. So that one now become a taxable income. That is what we are saying. Number two, any other amount transferred from the life fund for the benefit of shareholders. Now, they actually may recommend 5 million to be transferred.
for the benefits of shareholders out of the 8 million. But the director of the insurance company may say, other than the 5, let us add an extra 1 million to our shareholder. And they recommend it be transferred. Once it is recommended, that become another taxable income. So we have already talked about the two. So actuarial surplus recommended. It has to be recommended. If not recommended and you have actuarial surplus, don't tax. So it must be recommended to any other amount transferred from the right fund for the benefit of shareholder taxable. The last one is 30% of excess management and commission expense which is above amount recommended by the Insurance Act. And we are saying that amount recommended by the Insurance Act is based on the net premium of Rife business. How do you get the net premium of Rife business? It is computed in the same way as general insurance business. Then it is used to compute the management and commission expense around using the following table. So what we are saying here is this. You may find the management and commission expense for the Rife commission expense to be 30 million. If you find that the amount recommended of that one, what is recommended by the Insurance Act is like 18 million. So what we are saying is that the excess, what was incurred, this was incurred, versus what is recommended, the excess, the 12 million, become a taxable income, which we take 30% of it. Like now the 30% of this one is going to be the 3.6 million. So once you determine the 30% of that, you come and add it here another taxable income. So the three are there now. You add to get the total taxable. This six, nine, nine point six. That now become the taxable income. And if you don't have a general business, then you tax at the rate of 30% the corporation tax rate. Now, the issue is usually you can be given, for example, purpose, you may be given the management and commission expense in card, this one. But the, to get this one recommended, here I guessed, huh? you normally use the net premium of life. And how do you get the net premium of life? You compute it in the same way as general insurance business. Let's say you get the net premium, net premium of life business. Of life business is 45 million. So once you get it, that's what you are saying. You use this table to compute what is allowed by the act. This one now, this one I had guessed, we want now to compute based on the net premium of life of 45 million. Assume we get it this way. So you come here and see the first 5 million, you take 25%. The next 7.5, 22.5. The next 7.5, 20%. The next 10 million, 17.5. Above 30. Above that means you have already computed the 30. If you take 7.5 plus 7.5, that's 15. Plus 5, 20. Plus 10, 30. So you have already computed 30. So whatever is above 30, 15%. So if you look at that 45 million, you find that it will go all the way. It's in excess of 30. So you start computing from 5 million. And this is how you do it now. The amount recommended by the act here, you will say it is a 5 million times the 25%. Plus, we will go all the way to 15% because it's already 45 is in excess of 30 million. So the next one, 7.5 million times 22.5 percent. Then the next 7.5 million times 20 percent. Then the next 10 million times the 17.5 percent. Then now the excess. We have already computed 5, 7.5, 7.5, and 10. That's 30. Whatever is in excess. That means that 45 minus 30, that's 15. You take 15%. So it's going to be 15 million times the 15%. Now, when you do the computation, for example, this will get is 1.25. You do this one, you do this one, you do this one. So you get X, X, or we can even compute here. Let's see like how much. So the next one is going to be 7.5, 7.5 times 22.5. That gives us, we round off, 1688. The next one, this is going to be 1.5. And now this one is going to be 1.75 million 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 
So the other one is 15% times 15 million give you 2.25. Now add the million. So that one plus 1.75, this plus 1.5, this one plus 1.688. Plus the last one, 1.25. It will give you 8.438 million. So based on the net premium of 5, the amount recommended is this one. And that is the one that you come and now replace here. So I'm going to replace mine now to, let me round off to 8 million. So the management and commission expense in card is this. The recommended based on the net premium of 5 is this. So the excess here is 22. So no, now based on the correct figure of the net premium, as I have provided, then we are going to take 30% of 22. How much is that? That is going to be 6.6. .6. Now, we come and replace this one here, 6.6. .6. So the taxable income will be 12.6 now. And that becomes the taxable income. So the issue is usually how to get the recommended, which we base it on the net premium, and we use this table. And this table, in our next question, we are going to use it. So get it, so that when we come to using it, then we'll would just remember how we have drawn it there. So that is how we tax the general insurance, I mean the life insurance business. And now I want us to look at a question that...